number four, and again, this is something probably wholly and solely attributable to Airbnbs, is the cleaning fees or additional additional instructions um, for how they want you to treat the place. Uh, and <laughs> again, stack of videos on the internet on this one. I don't, if I've paid to stay and paid to utilize your location, um, I will look after it like it's my home. So this is no problem. I will respect things. It, it'd be unusual if anything got broken. You know, I would, I treat a place like I would want my place to be treated. And I think that's key. I do that anywhere. But honestly, the cleaning fees that are added, or can you just do this? Can you just do that? Can you just do this? No, <laughs> it's not appropriate. Um, you are paying to rent this space and utilize it. You are not paying to be someone who looks after it in that way. That is implied within the costs. I don't then pay separately for someone to come and clean my hotel room. That is included. And I like that. And Airbnb doesn't do that. Um, it doesn't have the regularity unless it indicates it. And then you probably have to ask. And again, it depends on the quality of the host. If this person doesn't understand service or doesn't provide it, it's a problem. And it can be an ongoing problem. So mm, big issue. <clears throat> now, that doesn't mean that there aren't people who do the private rentals that aren't decent. And I have come across a few of those. But for the most part, it's a whimsical thing of, am I going to get an instruction list? And am I going to get an angry instruction list? Like, make sure you don't open this. Don't touch that. I'm sorry. Is that what people enjoy when they go somewhere, being given a list of do's and don'ts like they're a five-year-old? If you have fine china, do not put it in the Airbnb. Right? Basic stuff, wear and tear, you've got people coming in and out. No. Right? Most people are going to respect the space. You're going to have 80% of people who respect it. You're going to have 10% who look after it like it's golden. You're going to have 10% who do really bad stuff. They're the 10% you hear about for people who stay in these places. And, and the 80% who are brilliant, you don't. But <clears throat> no, thank you. No cleaning fees. No do's and don'ts. Any instructions that should be provided should be basic and hospitable and polite. And again, not really my experience in the Airbnb one. I mean, look, I had some friends stay in one in Latvia and it was great except for the fact that it was literally someone's apartment. So you've got all that whole factor. And they said, look, they had a sense of humor. They seem nice. Get ready for cardio. Five double flights of stairs. No. So again, again, that's more likely in an Airbnb. I'm sorry. I like my lift. I like a, to bring my big ass bag up and down in a lift. So that isn't a specific one, but we'll, we'll attach that to lists of instructions and additional charges. This one's kind of a hard one to put into a category, but it's the non-standardization of the experience. There's no standardization. So you could go somewhere that's, you know, not really great. So I have had some managed by private host ones, which I didn't realize weren't hotels when I booked them. And, you know, I've been to some places where what they thought was good was not. They had very poor quality bedding. The bed was low. The furniture wasn't looked after. You had a list, a price list provided, Malta, a price list of how much it had cost for you to replace parts of the apartment um, and light light fittings. My, my personal favorite was the lamp beside the bed that had obviously been broken and been haphazardly glued together by the host. And then you were given a cost in euros if you'd had to replace it. Um, it was horrendous. It was awful. And I was told by the driver, oh, it's really, really nice. No, it wasn't. Um, I, there, there, <laughs> I've been I've been in even a hotel in Greece that was was made put together with IKEA furniture. It was really good. It'll be one of the hotels I talk about. But it was much better than this place that I'm being told is luxury in Malta. Please, no, absolutely not. So it's that non-standard. You you can be really lucky, but you can be just as equally unlucky. 
<clears throat> like they went in Malta, the bath was really low, what couldn't be properly used. The shower didn't work in, in it didn't work properly in the in the one in the bedroom. One of the windows didn't close there, so it was freezing in there. So it was everything about it was just hard work. So you're not having that. How am I going to make this a comfortable, fulfilling, wants to return experience? You, you're not getting that. Um, and so yeah, and adding to that one as a separate, um, your hosts are variable. When you go into you know, through Airbnb or through just a, a private owner um, on some of the other sites. Now, I'm going to say there's one slight exception, not through Airbnb, but one slight exception, which I would say for me, which has been Greece. In a few places you ended up, they aren't hotels, they're a little more private accommodation based in Greece. Uh, the one thing I can say about it is, particularly on some of the islands, they're incredibly hospitable. It's a basic default. What do you need? Is everything okay? And not in a overboard or crazy way. It's I, I found the Greeks very welcoming in every single way. As a culture, I found that. But I also found that you're like they're welcoming welcoming you back, even though they've never met you. And so it is. Have I missed anything? Is there anything that you know you recommend? Da da da. And they're there. And if anything goes wrong, they're there. Like, and it could be a small thing. It could be like, oh look, there's an issue with the hot water, or there's a, the, the Wi-Fi's gone off. They do everything they can to help. That's all it really comes down to because it's not like you can do anything about it. You need that support. That's what I find in hotels. You have that support. You have a front desk you can go to and ask. So the variable host factor when it's an individual is the thing for me. And it means that you have to do some other due diligence when you're booking. But it's a thing with Airbnb that I find debatable. Um, I've had a few, as I said, private hosts that were had some in London that were fabulous. Um, I don't think they're originally from Britain, but they were wonderful. Um, Greece, but then Malta. Um, but then most of the time I prioritize hotels. Um, there was a managed facility in Ireland. And if I never stay there again, it'll be too soon. And they will be reviewed at some point. And they will through a particular website, which again, I'll bring up and go through because of the booking side of things. But yeah, so just to run through those, it's, I don't like Airbnb's cancellation policy, which means they can cancel as an owner um, or, or, or as a person you've confirmed with at any time for the booking. Uh, it seems less safe to me. Uh, there is a, a greater likelihood of illegal cameras. You have additional charges and lists of instructions. Um, as pretty much a default, there's a non-standardization in the experience and you are taking a big gamble on the hosts. Um, <clears throat> basically because with a hotel front desk, it's customer service based. Their aim is to help you. Can you get someone who's having a bad day or cranky? Boy, have I got a story to share from Belgium. Um, but for the most part, they want you to have the best experience possible. So they're aiming for that. Now, I don't want to disparage Airbnb hosts because, or, or individual managed hosts because there are some that are exceptional. But I think your odds are higher in a hotel of having better customer service. And as the nomad I've been, that's the experience. There is the odd website where you can go through for longer ones and even hotels where you can do longer stays. And once again, I think that's almost combining the great things I like about hotels, which I'll cover in another video, with having like a longer stay. You don't, you, you, it's the best of both worlds. So yeah, and the thing is usually Airbnbs as well can be in buildings that don't have lifts or facilities. And that's one I wasn't really gonna add, but when I think about it, that's a key one. Um, particularly if you're in Eastern Europe, from my experience, they're older buildings and they don't have them. And it's not a great thing when the odds are you're arriving with a bag or you're coming back with shopping. You've, it's just, it, it makes it really difficult. It makes it not easily manageable. And granted, 20 year olds might not think about it. And if you know, you, you really got to lifting weights, you might not, it might not be an issue, but it's far more convenient when you can jump in the lift and just go up and not think about it. And you don't have to, because particularly if you're digital nomading and you're moving around as much as I do, you're living out of suitcases. You're not, you're carrying everything. So 
you don't want that to become such a burden that the whole process becomes a bit of a nightmare. It can from time to time, but if you're booking the right accommodation to support what you want to do, it's less of an issue. So for me, based on my personal experience, um, I've geared towards hotels. Some long stay, absolutely, but definitely hotels. Um, I just don't have the trust in Airbnb, sorry. And you know, you know what? It'll probably go and morph through another existence. And maybe the reason why I can still do the hotel thing is because Airbnb is in the market and there's the competition. So um, I think everything has a place. And when I say that, the one caveat is I have not taken what's called, I think, an Airbnb experience. Um, so I can't speak to those. But um, yeah. So there we go. Why hotels? Mm -hmm.